Hello! My name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matok Lasan. And in this video, we'll talk about testing the difference between two means using the Z-test. We use the Z-test whenever we want to compare the means of two independent groups to determine whether there is a statistically significant difference between these means. Let us consider this situation. Let us assume that our population or this rectangle represents the workers in an IT firm. So what I'm trying to do is to compare the salaries or the average salaries of the male and female in this company. So what I can do is divide the population into two groups. The group for the male workers and the group for female workers. Now, let mu sub 1 be the average salary of male workers in the company and mu sub 2 be the average salaries of the female workers in the company. Now, the next thing that I need to do is to get a sample from each of these groups. So, let this be our sample 1 and this be our sample 2. So let x bar sub 1 be the average salary of these samples and x bar sub 2 be the average salaries of these samples. Now, what if I'm trying to compare these two means? We can use the Z test in this situation. But before using the Z test, these assumptions should be met. First, the samples must be independent of each other like our example a while ago wherein there is a separate group for male and a separate group for female respondents. Both samples are random samples and the standard deviations of both populations must be known. If the sample sizes are less than 30, the populations must be normally or approximately normally distributed. Let's take a look at this example. A researcher hypothesizes that the average number of sports that colleges offer for males is greater than the average number of sports that colleges offer for females. Now, a sample of the number of sports offered by colleges is shown below. At alpha level 0.01, is there enough evidence to support the claim? Let us assume that both have population standard deviation of 3.3. Let mu sub 1 be the average number of sports that colleges offer for males and mu sub 2 for females. The null hypothesis tells us that there is no significant difference, so mu sub 1 is just equal to mu sub 2 in symbols. And since we are trying to figure out if there is a significant difference and if it's greater then the alternative hypothesis is mu sub 1 greater than mu sub 2. In other words, the average number of sports that colleges offer for males is not different from females is the representation for the null hypothesis while the alternative hypothesis tells us that the average number is greater than the females. And the first thing that we need to do is to transfer our data set in Microsoft Excel. In this case, I arrange our data set using two columns. The first column for the males and the second column for the females. And notice here below that I included the population standard deviation because we're going to use it in the computation later. So here, the population standard deviation for both is 3.3. And we need to get the population variance or the known variance in this case. So to get the population variance, you just need to square the standard deviation. So press equal sign, select this cell, and then caret sign squared. Press enter, and the population variance for both is 10.89. The population variance is included in the formula, even manually. That is why it's important for us to compute it first. And you will see it later. Now, to run the Z-test, test of difference, I need to go to Data Ribbon, then select Data Analysis, go to Z-test to Sample for Means, press OK, and this window will pop up. Now, notice that here we need to select our first variable range. So in this case, I'm going to select Males Column. And for the second set, I will select the female column. 
Notice that in this case, I included the labels, right? So if you included the labels in the selection of variables, you need to select this labels part in the window. Now, the hypothesis, hypothesized mean difference is zero. Why? Because our assumption is that there is no significant difference between the two means. So this is the assumption in general. But if you have a hypothesized mean difference like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, all you need to do is to type it here. Now, the first... Uh, or I mean the next step is to provide the variance for each variable. And notice that we got the values of the variance a while ago, right? Uh, so you can see here it's 10.89. So I just need to type 10.89 here. It's not always like this. Um, it's only in this example that we have the same population variance. But in other examples, of course, we may have different variants for each of the variable. Now, also stated in the problem, the alpha level is 0.01 or 1%. So here, I need to change 0 0.05 to 0 0.01. And if you want to select your output range, all you need to do is to select this cell in this part. So what if I'm going to select this part for our output? Then we're done. All you need to do now is to select OK. Now, selecting OK will give us this table. You can see here that the mean for the males is 8.56 and the mean for the females is 7.94. So both have the variance of 10.89 and uh, we both have the count for each observations as 50. So the sample size for each of this variable is 50. The hypothesis size mean is zero and we have here the different values that we need for decision making. So how about I just... Um, Round it off to two decimal places. Okay, so using the critical value method and right tail test, yes, we are using right tail test here because the alternative hypothesis as assumes that it's greater than. Okay, so it's one tail test. But if you want to use the two tail test, it's up to your um, objective in the research. So here, we have here the test value of 0 0.94 and the critical value for the one tail test Z critical is 2.33. Now, by critical value method, since the test value 0 0.94 is less than the critical value of 2.33, then we will not reject the null hypothesis, meaning we will retain the null hypothesis as our decision. Now, if you're using the p-value method, all you need to do is to look at this value. So p for one tail, and this is 0 0.17. And this p-value 0 0.17, as we all know, is greater than the level of significance of 0 0.01 or the alpha level 0 0.01. Then, same decision for the p-value method. We will not reject the null hypothesis. Again, allow me to emphasize my point a while ago. We perform one tail test. That is why we use these two values for our decision. But if you are trying to perform a two tail test, you can always select 0 0.35 for the p-value and 2.58 for the critical value. Since the null hypothesis was not rejected, then we don't have enough evidence to support the claim that the average number of sports that colleges offer for males is different or greater than the females. Let's have another example. A researcher wishes to see if the average length of the major rivers in the United States is the same as the average length of the major rivers in Europe. Now, the data in miles of a sample of rivers are shown below. At alpha level 0.05, is there enough evidence to reject the claim? Assume that the population standard deviation for the first is 450 and the population standard deviation for Europe is 474. Let mu sub 1 be the average length of the major rivers in the United States and mu sub 2 for Europe. Then the null hypothesis tells us that there is no significant difference between these two means while the alternative hypothesis tells there is a significant difference. Now since the researcher is trying to figure out if these two are just the same or the two means are just the same, then the claim is the null hypothesis. Again, we need to copy paste our data set in a sheet. So for the first column, we have United States and the second fall column for Europe. I also included the given population standard deviation or sigma sub 1 is 450 and sigma sub 2 in the problem is 474. 
And again, we need to get the population variance by squaring these values. So to get the population variance, select uh, 450, caret symbol, 2, and enter. So the answer is 202,500, while the other one is, all, is what? 224,676. So just the same formula. Uh, select this uh, C40, caret symbol, and then squared. So what I did, I just drag it to copy-paste the formula. Now, we have now the population variance. So we can now perform the test by going to the data ribbon again. Data analysis, Z-test, two sample for means. Okay, and this time, I need to change the range. This one here. And then we have the second range here. Okay, notice here that we have different uh, sample size for each of the variable. But it's okay, you can still perform Z-test even if the number of samples for each group are not equal. So I will just select up to 2,290 here. And since I selected the labels, I need to select this part. And the hypothesized mean difference is zero. And this time, we have different values for population variance. The first one is 202,500. So I'm going to type 202,500. Uh, and then the next one is 224. Yeah, that's it. 224,676. Our alpha level is 0 0.05 as stated in the problem. And the output range, I will just select the same output range here. Are we done? Uh, two variables range, check. Hypothesize mean difference, check. And then the population variance for each of the variable. And we have here 0 0.05 as alpha level. Yes, we're done. So press OK. And Excel will give us this table. Notice here that I just rounded off the values to two decimal places for easy understanding. So the z-test value is negative 0.86. That's because the mean of the second group, which is uh, u group, is greater than the mean of the first group, which is 662.61. That's the reason why this is negative. Now, for the type of test, we just need to decide if we're going to use one-tailed test or two-tailed test. And basing it from our alternative hypothesis, we have a two-tailed test. So here, we need to consider these two values for decision-making. For the critical value, we need to consider two values, the negative value and the positive value. So we can see here that in a distribution, these two um, vertical lines represent the critical values. This right side is for the positive 1.96, and this left side is for negative 1.96. So I will just type negative 1.96 here. Now, notice that the Z values, or the Z value 0 0.86 or negative 0 0.86 is between negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. So the Z value is in the middle. And we all know that this region is for the non-rejection region. Then, we will not reject the null hypothesis. Now, if you're using the p-value method, um, I'm going to select this value, 0 0.39. And since the p-value method is greater than the level of significance, which is 0 0.05, then we also will not reject the null hypothesis. So, both methods agree that we will not reject the null hypothesis. And going back to our problem, the null hypothesis will be retained while this will be crossed out. So the average length of the major rivers in the United States is the same as the average length of the major rivers in Europe. So there is no significant difference between the two means. Thus, we need to support the claim of the researcher. And that's all for this video. If you want more video discussion about hypothesis testing and how to perform them in Microsoft Excel, please check my playlists in the description down below. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.